What's going on, Dolph fans? It is your boy, Dylan. And as promised, I am here to do one of my first rounds of free agents, taking a dive into some of the free agents for possible free agents for the Dolphins. And so yesterday, if you didn't see it, check it out, my video for... Uh, the breakdown of the Dolphins' current players on the offensive line because now we are going to start looking at some of the poten potential free agents for the Dolphins on the offensive line. This video is going to be only the right tackles that I've looked at. I will be doing a video tomorrow on the left tackles and centers that I, um, you know, that I'm looking at or that I have on my list for this cycle, for this off season. And um, just to be clear, and you know, cause I've said it in my previous videos, but make sure to say it in this one, just so you guys know, I did not even look at any guards, any like true guards. I really just focused on tackles and centers because I don't think personally that we really need to focus too much on guard. I don't think it's a, a really high priority. I think Robert Hunt has got the right guard slot uh, locked up. I think he can be an all pro player, if not, you know, uh, uh, at least a pro bowl player, if not an all pro player at that position. Um, and then between again, you know, depending on what you do in the off season, if you do end up getting a center, then you have, you know, Dieter to count in the mix for, uh, the left guard position. But if not, you still have Austin Jackson. You still have Liam Eikenberg. You still have, um, you know, uh, God damn it. I'm blanking now. Uh, Austin Jackson, Liam Eikenberg, uh, you've got Solomon Kinley. You've got Robert Jones. There you go. Right. You've got all these guys. I'm sure you can find one that can slot in there at that position. And then especially too, because if you solidify the positions around it, then it kind of buys them a little bit of, you know, leniency. They can, you know, some of their flaws can be masked by the guys around them. And then obviously too, by Tua's ability to get the ball out quick, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, and hopefully we'll even have a better run game going forward too. So, um, yeah, I didn't look at guards at all. So with that being said, let's go ahead now and pop over to my uh, notes here and let's go through it. So the first thing I want to start with is real quick, just again, show you guys my position rankings by need. It is offensive line, tackles first, then center, running back, wide receiver, linebacker with uh, true middle as being really the focus, not really so much the entire linebacking unit, but just really the, the, that one, you know, specific piece there is, is that true middle linebacker defensive line with edge, having a slight edge over the tackle position, then cornerback tight end safety quarterback backup is what we're looking for to as our guy. Uh, and then specialists finally with punter being, um, you know, something to look at. So anyway, let's go ahead and now take a look. And as you can probably see now, I do have some of my, I, obviously I haven't done any of the, the fill-ins here, but you can see I do have uh, some prep work done on my um, draft prospects that I'm going to look at. Now you have, uh, you know, I mean, there's, look, there's some guys on here. I'm going to go through these different, you know, players or whatever. Um, but that's for a later time. We will focus on this now. You'll be able to see some of these names in this video, obviously, because it's all part of the same thing. But, um, you know, we are focusing right now on right tackles on the offensive line in free agency. So the first one I'm going to take a look at is Trent Brown from New England. That's who the current team he is with. He is an unrestricted free agent. He's 29 and his current APY or cap hit, whatever it was, is $9 million. These are his, you know, pro day combine stuff, whatever. Again, I'm not going to actually go through it, but it is useful and, and nice to have here in the video or whatever. He was a, a round seven pick, 244 overall, 2015 draft, seven years. He started off with the Niners from 15 to 17, then the Patriots in 18. Then he went to Oakland, Las Vegas from 19 to 20. 
And then New England Patriots, 2021 to present. Career stats, he's got 72 games played with 69 started, 4,335 snaps, 619.3 per year, uh, 12 sacks allowed, 1.7 per year, 34 penalties, 4.9. Now, real quick, it does. It, this will change depending on position, but when it comes to offensive linemen, like I said in my previous video, my video yesterday, if you're a full-time starter and you play every game, every snap of every game, you're going to break a thousand snaps pretty easy. So if you see an offensive lineman that doesn't get to a thousand snaps, that's likely because they either got injured or, you know, they're just not, um, they haven't earned that much playing time yet. Now, as you can see in his 2021 stats, he had nine games played, nine games started, 489 snaps with one sack allowed. Um, and that's because, you know, there was injuries, right? He had some injuries this year or whatever, and so he didn't play the full year. And so, you know, he hasn't managed to... Now, that is not necessarily a knock on a player, but it is obviously part of the context and something to keep in mind. Um, and same thing when it goes to, you know, the grades and everything. And as you can see, the snap counts here, how they vary, um, you know, keep that in mind. So the grades are based off of that number of snaps. And, you know, is does the, does the player have a trend of not being able to make it through an entire year, right? Which he does kind of have a little bit of that, but, you know, still a pretty good player. Anyway, he, may, he did make the Pro Bowl in 2019, so he does have that on his resume. And he is a Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl 53 back in 2018, obviously, with the Patriots. So as for his grades, and he'd be a solid, he'd be a solid addition if, if they, if he does break away from, um, now he is one of the more expensive, so maybe that's not necessarily where you want to go. But again, I would pay Buku dollars for whoever the Dolphins want to go get at right tackle. This is the position that I would pay the most on. So, um... Anyway, again, looking real quick, let's do his year-by-year -year, uh, pro football focus grades. 2021 on 489 snaps. He, he's been consistent pretty much overall, right? And mo most of his grades are in the green area. So he had an overall of 77.6 and 81.2 in pass blocking and a 70.4 in run blocking. In 2020, uh, he had 282 snaps, so obviously didn't play a lot in 2020. He had a 68.9 overall, 73.2 pass blocking, and a 63.6 run blocking. In 2019, 581 snaps worth, and he had a 69.1 overall, 77.8 pass blocking, 63.3 run blocking. He did play, uh, it would appear, a full year in 2018, having logged 1,090 snaps. Um... So pretty close to a full year, if not the full thing. Overall of 69.7, 68.5 in pass blocking, and 65.9 in run blocking. 669 snaps in 17, a 73 overall, 79.2 pass blocking, and a 70.9 run blocking. On 1,035 snaps in 16, he had a 61.9 overall, 69.7 pass blocking, and a 58.2 in run blocking. When it came to uh, 15, he had 189 snaps. Obviously, these were his first two years in the league. So, you know, that's obviously part of the context, too. He was a rookie in 15, 189 snaps, a 64 overall, 68.6 pass blocking, and a 54.3 run blocking. So I do think he would be a good addition um, and, and definitely somebody they should be looking at if he is to potentially break free from New England. Even though I'm not generally a guy that likes to fucking dip into that New England facility, period, whether it be coaches, for sure, definitely not coaches. But even when it comes to players, I try to stay away from New England, just period. But I'm not as hard on, you know, bringing over players, although... You know, with this, me I don't want to, I also don't want to bring over like the entire Patriots fucking, you know, set of cast offs or, or whatever, because I don't want to have an entire team of Patriot players because I don't want to be the Patriots. Anyway, Brandon Shell is up next. He's currently with the Seahawks. He's an un unrestricted free agent. He is 30 years old. So obviously something to keep in mind there. He's, he is on the back end there. I mean, you know, 
He could play for a number of years still, but he is getting a bit older. He's got a 4.5 million current APY. These are his pro day and blah, blah, blah. He was around five pick, 158 overall in 2016. He's got six years in the league. Started off with the Jets from 16 to 19 and went to the Seahawks in 2020 and has been there ever since. He's got 70 games played, 61 started, 3,779 snaps, 629.8 per year, 22 sacks allowed, 3.7 per year, 19 penalties, 3.2 per year. In 2021, he didn't obviously didn't make it the full season and hasn't really made it the full season. Oh, man. I guess I forgot to type in the number of snaps that he had for 2018. Um, that's interesting. So real quick, I could probably pull it up if I just really fast go over to PFF. I can figure it out. But anyway, so, um, oh, no. Uh, but anyway, I meant to go back to this. So let's keep going, though. So uh, he had 10 games played, 10 started, 550 snaps in 2021, three sacks allowed with one penalty. Uh, okay, who is it? It's Brandon Show. no? Yeah, Brandon Show. Let's do it just a quick... Bear with me just a second here. I, I'm a stickler for this. I love things to be complete, and I hate when they're not. So it's going to, like, bug me. So bear with me for just a half a second. What year was it? It was 2018. So 2018, we can quickly get his snaps. Offensive snaps played there. It is 850. So we will input that there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, um, yeah, and he either, you know, with penalties being green, he either tied or um, set a career best in that category. PFF grades on 550 snaps in 2021, he had a 67 overall, a 60.4 pass blocking that actually should be yellow based off of how I was doing things, 69.6 run blocking, this actually also should be yellow. I kind of, ch this was still early on in my figuring out how I was going to do all this stuff, so I hadn't quite yet figured out uh, my parameters on, on all that. Anyway, I may change things up a little bit if, if it falls out because from 60 to 65 is supposed to be yellow. In fact, I'm seeing this one here. And then 65.1 uh, all the way up to 83 is supposed to be green. Anyway, because I tried to keep it as close to what PFF had it. So in 2021, he had a 67 overall, 60.4 pass blocking, and a 69.6 run blocking. And again, I'm stickler for... Uh, everything to be uniform and everything to be as it's supposed to be. So I'm just super OCD about shit like that. It is what it is. I like to be very, very like, I'm kind of a perfectionist with shit like that. Anyway, 2020, he had 673 snaps, a 72.7 overall, 80.3 pass blocking and a 61.1 run blocking. On 806 snaps in 2019, he had a 63.6 overall, 64.7. Actually, that also should be yellow because it's still under 65 and a 59.1 run blocking. And on those 850 snaps in 18, a 63.7 overall, 69.4 pass blocking, and in the run, a 58.8. On 696 and 17, he was 64.7 overall, 65.3 pass blocking, and a 61.3 run blocking. 204 snaps in 2016, his rookie year, looked like actually one of his better years. He had a 73.4 overall with an elite pass blocking grade of 86.1 and a 62.6 run blocking grade. Um, not as high on him because, you know, I don't think he's as good and he's a little bit older and stuff like that, even though he's less expensive. Again, I would pay the Buku dollars, but still probably not a bad idea. At least maybe do their due diligence on him and see what's going on. Jermaine Effetti from Chicago. He has void years on his contract. That's where he currently is right now. Um, he's in those void years, so um, that's a little bit different than, you know, unrestricted, uh, exclusive rights, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, he's just in those void years of the contract, so they can be voided, right? Uh, anyway, he's 28 with a 4.25 million current APY. These are his stuffs uh, from the combine, etc. Draft status, he was a round one pick. Uh, 31 overall in 2016, got six years in the league, started out with the Seattle Seahawks from 16 to 19, and now the Bears from 20 to present. He's got 85 games played, 80, 83 started, 25 sacks allowed. Uh, this is a little, 
I kind of screwed up. God, I hate, like, this is what I'm talking about when I say I'm a stickler. Like, it's, everything's got to be in its place. Okay, he had 5,483 snaps and 913.8 per year. So he's he's been closer to staying, you know, healthy and on the field um, for his entire career, right? He is clo a lot closer to that 1,000 snaps mark on a per year basis. 25 sacks allowed with 4.2 per year and 61 penalties, 10.2 penalties per year though. That's pretty wild, right? Like obviously that's not something you would want to see and something that would need to be, need definitely need to be cleaned up. Uh, his discipline, right? So 2021 didn't make it through though. He had nine games with seven started, 412 snaps, and did set or tie career bests though with two sacks and four penalties, but again, only on 412 snaps. So take that for what you will. Uh, and as far as his grades go, um, again, I'm just going to kind of probably change some stuff up as we go. Don't mind me. It is what it is. He had an overall grade of 61.8, a pass blocking grade of 70.7, run blocking grade of 58.6. In 2020 on 1,066 snaps. Man, see, look, that, and this is interesting because 65 on the dot I have in my yellow group. Actually, and this should be yellow too. 65.1 is where I changed it over to green. If you know anything about Pro Football Focus, like their little their grades are are color coded like this, um, but they change shade very, ever so slightly. So it's hard to tell exactly when it transitions over. I had to give my best guess. I came up with these brackets anyway. He had a 65 overall on this 1,066 snaps, 63.7 pass blocking, and a 62.8 run blocking. But it is a little bit more visual to kind of give you an idea of how good they were, right? So, and again, and some of it's changing because I was still pretty raw in my... Uh, you know, process here. 2019, 1,107 snaps, a 56.2 overall, 60.3 pass blocking, 55.6 run blocking. 989 snaps in 2018, had a 56.5 overall, a 71.5 pass blocking, and a 50.7 run blocking. Obviously, you know, take pro football focus for what it is, but his grades aren't spectacular. I mean, uh, you know, this is what you don't want to see, though, although in his rookie season, it is what it is, but, you know, there's uh, none of these guys, almost none of these guys. There are some exceptions in, you know, and certainly in some other positions where some guys are just, you know, consistently graded out as the best of the best of the best. But anyway, uh, where was I? Did I get to 17? So once uh, in uh, 2017, 1,068 snaps, he had a 51.7 overall, a 67.6 pass blocking, and a 46.9 run blocking. On 841 snaps in his rookie season, 2016, 51.3 overall, 35.6 pass blocking, and a 68.8 run blocking. All right, now let's move on to Morgan Moses from the Jets. He's an unrestricted free agent at 31, so he is a bit older, another one of the older candidates. Now, you know, throughout these lists, I definitely do have tons of guys that are, you know, older. I've got a bunch of younger guys. I've got guys that were drafted in all kinds of different places. So I tried to make sure that these lists were a good mix of like, you know, veteran, like older veterans, but some younger veterans or some younger players and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I like, I tried to make sure it was a good mix of all of it. So Anyway, there's that stuff. He was a round three pick, 66 overall in 2014. He's got eight years in the league. Started off with the Redskins and Commanders, 2014, 2020. It's funny because this is actually, I changed my formatting on this. I'm not going to bother with it now because I would have to actually go and look up and figure out uh, some some things. But anyway, um, and then the New York Jets because I wanted, anyway, whatever. I'm just so such a like OCD about everything being super uniform like you have no idea it bothers me when it's not New York Jets 2021 to present career stats 121 games 113 games started 7047 snaps with 880 uh, 880.875 snaps per year, 37 sacks allowed with 4.625 per year, 61 penalties, 7.625 per year. 
uh, let's see, 2021, he played in all 17 games, starting 16 of them with 1,022 snaps. So the whole year, basically, four sacks allowed and three penalties. Not bad for his 2021, right? Now let's take a look at his grades. And this is what I'm saying. Aside from his rookie year, Morgan Moses has been pretty solid across the board. Now I am going to change up one or two of these to a yellow because of my brackets. But for the most part, he's been solid, right? Um, anyway, in 2021, on those 1,022 snaps, he's got a 71 overall, 65.7 pass blocking, and a 74.9 run blocking. Solid, And all of these guys, I, I think, well, obviously, any guy that I have on these lists, I think they should at least take a look at. Doesn't necessarily mean I'd go after him, but Morgan Moses, an additional piece to taking him away from the Jets is you then hurt one of your division rivals as well. So, anyway, moving on. Um, 2020, he's got 1,065 snaps logged, an 80.6 overall, 70.8 pass blocking, an elite, an elite 85.9 run blocking grade. His only one, though, over his career, so, you know, still room for improvement, but again, he's been pretty consistent, right? 858 snaps in 19, give him a 65.2 overall, 69.5 pass blocking in. This actually will get upgraded from an orange to a yellow, making it a 60.9 run blocking. 965 snaps in 18, a 64.4 overall, a 68.7 pass blocking, and a 65.9 run blocking. 958 snaps in 17, 67.2 overall, 66.1 pass blocking, and a 66.6 run blocking. That's fancy. 2016, he had 1,017 snaps, a 76.8 overall, 75.3 pass, 73.6 run. 1,032 snaps in 15, 75.2 overall, 71.5 pass, 75.9 run. And only, and, and to be fair, he didn't play very many snaps in his rookie season. So in 14, he only had 130 snaps, didn't fare too well, but it was only 130 snaps in his rookie year, 54.4 overall, 63.2 pass blocking, and a 50.2 run blocking. Now, look, he, you know, it, it, especially because he's uh, he is 31, though, so he is a bit older, but he is cheaper. A solid guy, a, definitely a veteran guy, a guy you could bring in and probably would be one of the more reliable. Now, at 31 years old, is he going to be, you know, is he going to continue to be that reliable? Obviously a question, but again, do your due diligence. Mike Remmers from KC, UFA at 33. Again, another older guy. I have some younger guys on this list. Don't worry. Uh, again, right tackle was the position that I did the most amount of players at. And that's why I'm doing an entire video on just right tackle. Whereas tomorrow, my video will be on left tackles and centers. He's got a 3.3 million current APY. Uh, these are his stats. He was undrafted in 2012. Nine years in the league, started off with the Broncos in, in 2012, then the Bucks in 13, the Chargers, the Vikings, and the Panthers. See, this, or I'm sorry, and this is how I actually changed the formatting. So in 2013, he was actually with three teams. So he started off with the Bucks, went to the Chargers, and then the, also the Vikings. In 2014, he was with two teams, the Panthers and the Vikings. Then in, from 15 to 16, he was with the Panthers, 17 to 18, the Vikings, 19 with the Giants, and 20 to present with the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, I will say this too, similar to how... Uh, with coaches, there is some benefit to traveling around the league a bit for a player, although generally speaking, I would say that it's probably looked at as a little bit more of a negative for a player because that player was uh, you know, incapable of managing to stick around in one place. No team really thought he was good enough to be there, right? And even you can look and you, there, you can even have the argument that, look, even in 2013, 2014, right, um, he ended up on three players and two players, or three players, three teams and two teams respectively in those years. He only spent one year with the Broncos, only one year with the Giants, right? So what do these teams know? Do these teams, you know, and KC had some, you know, has had some issues with their offensive line in recent years. So maybe not a guy that you want to take a look at. But again, always do your due diligence, but probably not at the top of my list if I was going to go for one of these guys. So far, honestly, I would say probably Morgan Moses or um, uh, Trent Brown are at the top of my list right now if you look at these guys and probably are at the top of the list regardless um, especially if you're talking about like the older veteran guys, for sure. 
But anyway, career stats, 96 games played, 90 started, 6,027 snaps with 669.7 per year. So obviously had a little bit more trouble staying up at that mark. 27 sacks allowed, 3 per year, 51 penalties, 5.7. Not terrible in those departments, right? Uh, obviously 2021 didn't make it through the entire season only played four games two started 151 or 156 snaps one sack allowed one penalty by the way I tried to get each of these players injury histories as well but there was no place that I could find like all of these different stats and all of this stuff that I have this information in here you know I was able to find websites that had it all compiled together for me so I could just input it into this fancy little thing my one note here and you know you know uh, build this presentation right um, but there's no place to find and I would love to see somebody put together just like, you know, the stuff that's public. You don't got to like dive into these people's personal histories and like get like all up in their like, you know, medical histories and shit. But just the stuff that's public from like college and from the NFL, somebody should go out there and compile all of that data and information that's out there because I'm sure it's out there. And so that way you can track these players injury histories through their careers because I wanted to give you all of these players injury histories to help explain you know maybe why they weren't able to play full seasons but um, in any particular season but I couldn't so I'm sorry about that I really wish that I could have anyway on his 156 snaps in 2021 though he had a 64.5 overall a 63.6 pass blocking and a 67.9 run blocking 709 snaps in 2020 a 70.1 overall 76.4 pass 61.9 run in uh, 2019 on 870 snaps, a 64.2 overall, 68.8 pass, 55.8 run. Uh, in 2018, 1,048 snaps, so played basically the whole year, if not the whole year, right? 61.1 across the board, overall pass and run. Um, so I guess that's way to be consistent, right? 2017, 674 snaps, 71.3 overall, 71.1 pass, 68.5 run. 1,106 snaps in 16, 71.2 overall, 71 pass, 69.3 run. 15 had 1,101 snaps, so he's got a few years of playing the entire year, but hasn't been able to do that consistently. Obviously, the early on in the, in his early days, in these early years, it's probably because he didn't earn the playing time from, you know, whatever team he was on. Later on, it probably has a little bit more to do with injuries. That's just, you know, going off the top and making an assumption based off of what's most probable. Anyway, in 15, 1,101 snaps, a 66-1 overall, 67.6 pass, 64-7 run. 2014, 359 snaps, a 68.5 overall, 75.9 pass, 62.7 run. Only four snaps in 2013, 58.9 overall, didn't get a pass blocking grade and a 57.9 run. No snaps in 2012, so nothing to give you there. Nate Solder from the Giants, he's on void contract years, he's 34, uh, obviously the oldest so far of all of these guys. 3 million current APY, these are his fancy statistics from his combine and stuff whatever he was a round one pick in 17 uh 17th overall in 2011 uh years in the league he's got 10 started off with the patriots from 11 to 17 giants from 18 to present he's got 146 career games 143 started 9565 snaps 956.5 per year so even at his elevated age of 34 years old he has managed to for the most part keep um you know pace with uh, a full year's worth of work 58 sacks allowed 5.8 per year 55 penalties 5.5 he had 16 games played 16 started in 2021 with 927 snaps six sacks and six penalties and i as you can see i tried to get things like their awards if they had any if they made it to the pro bowl and so on and so forth so all really good information i think and and i hope you guys like it so as far as awards he did get some he got the pro football weekly and Sporting News All-Rookie from 2011, and he is also a Super Bowl champion, Super Bowl 49 in 2014, 
and Super Bowl 51 in 2016. So a two-time Super Bowl champion. As far as his grades now, and real quick, by the way, 2020, if you see this for 2020, I think it's most likely because they were an opt-out that year. Anyway, PFF grades in 2021 on 927 snaps. He had a 60.3 overall, 52.7 pass, 67.3 run. Didn't have any snaps in 2020. I'm pretty sure he was an opt-out, so nothing to give you there. 1,011 snaps in 19, 64.9 overall, 66.5 pass, 52.9 run. In 2018, he had 1,027 snaps, 75.7 overall, 76.8 pass, 66.6 run. And look, he's got actually had, you know, pretty much his entire career consistent and pretty good grades. Got a couple elite marks in here, right? And has managed to, for the most part, play an entire season throughout his entire career. So those are the kinds of things that are upsides uh, if you were going to take a look at a Nate Solder, right? And a, a, another good guy you could potentially plug in there. Uh, did I say 17? I think I did 17, right? In 2016, he had 1,029 snaps, 85.8 overall, 85.5 pass blocking. So got two elite grades there, 77 in the run. Uh, good grade, right? 225 snaps in 15, probably due to injury, my guess. And so this actually should be green. Look, going to upgrade him to a green there on a 65.5 uh, pass blocking grade. He had a 68.9, pretty sure that's not supposed to be there, 68.9 overall and a 70.7 run block. In 2014, he had 1,046 snaps, 70.8 overall, 71.7 pass blocking, and 67.7 run. In 2013, he had a 1,088 snaps and had another one of his elite marks. He had an overall of an 83.7, which doesn't exactly make sense when you have a pass block grade of 80.3 and a 77.7 and run. Probably should be somewhere more in the middle of those two things, but... Whatever, it's Pro Football Focus's grades. This is what they gave him. So in 2012, he had 1,236 snaps, 77.8 overall, 70.7 pass, 77.4 run. And in 2011, his rookie year, he had 862 snaps, 68.3 overall, 59.2 pass, and a 79.4 run. Even in his rookie season, did pretty well. And obviously, he had that one award as an all-rookie for those uh those news articles or those news um uh outlets Jordan Mills is another option I have on this list. 32, a UFA from New Orleans. New Orleans, he's pretty cheap. Current APY of a little over a million. This is his stuff. Draft status, round five, 163 overall, 2013. I know most of the guys on the list are older, but that's because, like I said, man, I just really want, I really want them to stack a couple veterans onto this offensive line. For sure, Buku dollars on right tackle. I would also get a left tackle for sure and free agency. And then, you know, I would love to see them also add a center. Anyway, he was a round five pick, 163 overall in 2013, eight years in the league. Started with the Bears from 13 to 14, Bills in 15, and also the Bears in 15, so two teams in the 2015 season. 2016 to 18, he was with the Bills. 19 and 2019, he was with the Cardinals and the Dolphins for a stint, right, for a little bit of time. And then the Saints from 2021 to present. So this, uh, I think that's actually supposed to say 20. 20 to present um anyway so moving on career stats he's got 100 games played 87 started 5563 snaps 695.375 per season obviously hasn't made it up to that that full you know workload whether it be because of injuries or whatever 32 sacks I my guess is probably because he hasn't earned very much playing time uh, 32 sacks allowed, 4 per season, 38 penalties, 4.75. In 2021, he played in 10 games, started 3, 221 snaps, and only had 1 penalty, no sacks. That's why it's not here on the list. And his grades for this season, obviously not very good though. Uh, overall of 47.8 passing, it was 56.2 and a 44.4 in run. Now I'm going to say that it was probably because he was a COVID opt-out as to why he didn't play in 2020. 
Um, although I'm not 100% sure, I didn't check on those things when I was doing all this. There was so much information to gather that that was one thing that I did not do to verify. But my guess is is that he was probably an opt-out. In 2019, he played 81 snaps. Um, and he had an overall of 38, 33.4 pass, and a 39.1 run blocking grade. Obviously not very good there. On his 1,013 snaps in 18, he had a 56.5 overall, which actually should be in the orange department. A 66.5 pass and a 48.6 run. In 17, he had 1,024 snaps. He's not... Not some. I have him on the list because, again, I wanted to be pretty thorough and make sure to give you guys a bunch of candidates, but I wouldn't go after him if it was me. Other than, you know, just, again, doing your due diligence on every player that's out there. Anyway, 56.5 overall, 66.5 pass, 48.6 run. In 2017, he had 1,024 snaps, 61.4 overall, 71.4 pass, and a 50.9 run. Obviously, if he's been consistent in anything, it's not been very good, um, generally speaking, either not playing well or being able to make it on the field. In 16, he had 1,033 snaps, a 61.8 overall, 61.5 pass, and a 59.7 run blocking grade. 357 snaps in 15, 54.3 overall, 55.2 pass, 54.5 run. 822 snaps in 14, 62.7 overall, 59.9 pass, and a 73.1 run. 1,012 snaps his rookie year, uh, 55.8 overall, 46.7 pass, and a 63.6 run. Next up, we have a slightly younger guy as an undrafted free agent, 28, Bobby Hart from Buffalo. Uh, he's cheap, 990,000 APY or, you know, cap hit, whatever it is. These are his measurables and his scores, etc., etc. He was only around seven pick, 226 overall in 2015, seven years in the league. Spent a few years with the Giants from 15 to 17, the Bengals from 18 to 20, and two teams in 2021. And then, of course, because I didn't do it and because I'm a huge stickler for it, I am going to quickly update this. So he is currently with the Buffalo Bills presently. There we go. Currently with the Buffalo Bills. So in 2021, though, he did split some time with the Titans and the Bills and now is currently with the Bills. Career stats, he's got 83 games, 67 started, 4,597 total, 656.7 per year. So obviously another guy not really being able to... Now, again, at the top of my list, you've got probably, you know, uh, the top... It's hard to, it's hard to, for me, it's kind of hard to rank them in any specific order, but you're going to have Trent Brown, Nate Solder, Morgan Moses. Those are probably going to be the older veteran guys. That's probably going to be like my top three out of all these guys on the list. 31 sacks allowed, 4.4 per year, 34 penalties, and a 4.9 per year average there. His stats for 2021, four games, one started, 102 snaps, two sacks, three penalties, obviously not very good, nor are his grades. 2021 on those 102 snaps, a 33.7 overall, 26.5 pass, and a 42, or 42 run, 872 snaps in 2020, 66.3 overall, 60.8 pass, 68.5 run. 2019, 1,086 snaps, 57.6 overall, 68.7 pass, 46.3 run, 994 and 18, 57.1 overall, 62.9 pass, 56.1 run. 2017, he had 520, 30, uh, 520, 30, 523 snaps, 44.8. Overall, 48.2 pass, 46.3 run, 867 snaps in 16, 56.4 overall, 54.8 pass, 61.1 run, and on his 153 snaps in 15, 56.2 overall, 55.1 pass, and a 59.6 run. That actually also should be orange. Anyway. Uh, another old guy, Riley Reef from Cincinnati, void, 34.75. Uh, now... Anyway, whatever. It is what it is. Again, I just really want a, a proven veteran at that right tackle spot. And again, the top the top choices are definitely gonna for me gonna be like a now I do have Taron Armstead, but I do have him in the left tackles position. 
uh, grouping, whatever, you could argue that he could be a right tackle and he'd probably actually be one of your better options. So depending on which, you know, um, position you have him at, he's definitely going to be a top candidate. But anyway, he's in his void year, 7.5 million current APY, 34, probably not worth that, but you know, it is what it is. He was a round one pick 23 overall in 2012, 10 years in the league from the, uh, on the Lions from 12 to 16, Vikings from 17 to 20 and Bengals from 21 to present career stats. Uh, and obviously though, you know, just made it to the Super Bowl um, as a veteran guy. So it does have that even though he didn't win it, but he did make it there. 147 games played, 139 started, 8,730 snaps, 873 per year, 35 sacks allowed, 3.5 per year, 43 penalties, and 4.3 per year. His 2021 stats, he had 12 games played, 12 started, so didn't make it the entire way, but most of it, 711 snaps, 4 sacks, 1 penalty, his grades for 2021 on those snaps, 67.3 overall, 58.4 pass, 70 run. 2020, he had 1,003 snaps, 71.4 overall, 74.9 pass, and a 60.8 run blocking grade, which will get a slight upgrade in color. 87, uh, 874 snaps in 2019, 71.2 overall, 73.2 pass, 65.1 run 2018 793 snaps 74.1 overall 71.3 pass 69.4 run blocking 17 he had 1007 snaps 64.1 overall 69.9 pass 59.8 run 888 snaps in 16 69.1 overall 67.3 pass 64.8 run 1073 snaps in 2015 overall though right pretty solid grades and for most the most part he is making it through the entire year so he do, does have those things going in his advantage for the most part although he is getting older at this point so 2015 1073 snaps 78 overall 73.7 pass 76.3 run and will he be able to keep that up at this point 944 snaps in 2014 80.8 overall 80.6 pass 71.3 run 1111 snaps in 2013 70.4 overall 72.7 pass 67.9 run and he graded grading wise he had his best year as a rookie which um was in 2012 and i guess since we just got to the end of the right tackles list i guess i really didn't have very many actual young guys but there are younger guys for sure uh, more under 30 guys in the rest of the way and certainly at left tackle and one or two centers as well that are younger but anyway again i just want veteran guys so that's why these guys are going to be older for sure generally speaking but i did think i had one or two more under 30s in the right tackle but i guess not Anyway, his best grades come from 2012, only on 326 snaps, though. Got a couple elite grades here, an 87.8 overall, a 72 blocking, and an 86.4 in the run blocking category. So there you have it. That is going to wrap it up for my video on the potential free agent targets that I took a look at for this offseason for the Miami Dolphins. And again, out of all of those guys, probably if I had to list my top three out of all of them, it's probably going to be, you know, some combination of Nate Solder, um, Trent Brown. And although Trent Brown's probably who I would go with, if I'm being honest, um, or, you know, Morgan Moses, yeah. Honestly, he's been pretty consistent. Not a bad idea to take a swing there. Um, so, you know, you just got to hope, obviously, though, that, you know, he will stay healthy and, and be able to play the entire season. Um, and hopefully he can give you another one or two years of some good, consistent, you know, play at that position. Although anybody, just about anybody we bring in will be better than Jesse Davis, though, right? So, you know... But I, and I do think any of those three guys would be substantial upgrades. Obviously, Trent Brown is the younger of those three guys. So if you did, I think he's 29, so he is under 30. So, um, you know, if you wanted to go with a little bit younger just to try and make sure that you can keep him the entire way, maybe you go with a Trent Brown as opposed to a Nate Solder or um, a Morgan Moses. But 
Anyway, again, there you have it. Tomorrow, like I said, I will be doing another video on the offensive line, although this time it will be looking at potential left target or left targets, left tackles and uh, centers as targets for the Dolphins this offseason. So make sure you check that out as well. And again, if you didn't see my video from yesterday, check that out talking about the current players that we have on the Dolphins offensive line. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. Before I get out of here, make sure you check out the Rave on Sports app, the new fan-driven sports app for all your sports, whether it be baseball, basketball, football, college, whatever you like, they got it, and they're looking to enhance your game day experience with live play-by-play -play coverage, live chats with other fans and content creators like myself, while also providing you with an arena to dispute the terrible officiating. So make sure you look for the links to that in the description box. And with that, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you guys appreciate my perspective. If you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the bell if you want to get the alerts. Share my channel and videos with your friends and family. Leave your questions, comments, and concerns down in the comment section. Of course, as always, follow me on Twitter at Dylan Tartaro, as well as on Instagram at Dolphins underscore with underscore Dylan and with that I am out I'll see y'all soon fins up Miami wins it.